kit has you operate the flaps with individual servos to each flap, but I wanted to try something a little bit different this time. What I've done here is solder the brass ball of the ball link to a piece of music wire, and that music wire then goes to the two nylon connectors which are part of the torque rods, and then the ball link connects all that to the servo. I've operated this flap mechanism at least a dozen times, and there's no visible signs of racking or binding or any sort of misalignment. I've not actually tried this in flight, but I like the way it works on the ground. So I'm going to give it a chance and see how it works. I always have the option to go back and add a second servo and operate each torque rod by its own servo. This is just a different take on the RDS or rotary drive system. While not as elegant as the RDS, it is definitely something that you can do at home. Top notch kit plans show Robart retracts for both the nose and the main gear. There's also a nose hole steering servo that sits right by the Robart retract. Since I'm using local electric retracts, I couldn't really use that steering servo in that location. So I came up with a homemade steering system. Right now I'm grinding out some of the fuselage former that will accept the nose hole steering servo. It sits in the forward part of the nose wheel compartment. Working on the nose gear retract for the fan. <laughs> I hate to admit it, but it's taken me three days to get this sorted out. And the key is something that's really simple if you're an engineer. I'll explain that a little bit later. Anyway, this is what I have set up. It's pretty much in its final form. This is the retract and it allows you to so get the nozzle steering in there as well. This is just to show you how it works. This is local electric retracts. They're probably made in a Chinese factory and they're all over the world, but I just know them as local retracts. So here's the steering part of it. Seems to work well enough. And then the retraction works well enough as well. Show you where I got the idea. This is an uh, E-Flight P51. And I was really kind of impressed with their tailwheel steering. The servo is back up in there. And then there's a wire that comes back 
and it fits to this uh, fitting. I'm not sure what you call it, but it's basically like an aileron strip uh, torque linkage type thing. And then that slides up and down on this bar right here, which goes into the uh, music wire strut. The, the real key to this one is that the pivot point seems to be um, a little bit forward of the actual uh, uh, strut. Now on the fan, the strut is, is right in line and is coplanar and has the pivot point. So that made it a little bit tougher, but I believe that the pivot is here, which is just about right in line with the hole there where the push rod goes through. So that's pretty much in the same plane. So when this tail wheel retracts, this joiner here doesn't really move. It's pretty slick. So let me show you the component pieces. Obviously you have the push rod as I have a little bend in it because of this former right here. I was getting a little bit of uh, binding here. So I had to make a little bend in it to get the top of the push rod to clear this former. And then here's your little connector. I wish I could remember what these things were called, but anyway, I think you get the idea. So that's the push rod. Uh, and then here is my steering arm. Now, originally I wanted to use this steering arm. It actually comes with this retract. The problem with the steering arm was that it was too long. It was hitting the, I believe this is called the gear door support. Anyway, it was hitting uh, on this. So I had to modify, I went to my local RC guy and got a, another bracket and it ended up being a little bit too short. I wanted to get as much throw as I could, which meant getting this arm right up against the gear door support. So I ended up making a little PC board extender, cut out some PC board. These two bolts go into pre-drilled and pre-tapped holes. I believe these are 1.8 mm bolts and it's pre-tapped from the store. And then I just used a piece of uh, cut down push rod, cut a hole in the PC board and then just snugged it up with two nuts. On the end here, I have a piece of Heat, heat shrink on the P51 they use a little half Z bend just a curve and that just keeps this joiner from sliding off the end chose to use a little piece of heat shrink which holds it on you can still slide this keeper through and it's got just enough friction that keeps it from popping off and you can also take it off fairly easily so, so I'm gonna go with that um, and then the last thing and here's the key the key is you have to raise you have to know your pivot point is on your retracts and the pivot point on these the line shows the I guess the horizontal plane and then it's three-eighths of an inch down from the top of the mounting flange here. So you, what you have to do to keep this from hitting the mount, you have to raise your retract up at least three eighths of an inch. I ended up raising up half an inch and that keeps your, let's see, can you see that? Um, it keeps your little sliding bar from hitting the mount. Let me explain a little bit better here. It's not so much about the slider bar rubbing against the plywood mount plate. That's pretty obvious. The issue was I had set the nylon keeper at 3 8 of an inch down, which was in line with the pivot point of the retract. However, whenever I would raise the nose gear, that little keeper would slide off the slider bar. So I had to end up raising the 
nose wheel mount up to half an inch, which helped keep the nylon keeper from sliding off the slider bar. So to, to put it all together, um, just stick the wire in, push, I'm sorry, the push rod, and then So here it is, it slides up and down easily. So that's in place. And let's see. So we'll show you the nose wheel steering. Seems to work good. You can see my little bend so it can clear the former. And then I'll show you the uh, mechanism, try to anyway, as it, I watch the sliding bar. See how it kind of moves along that sliding bar. Now like this, you can actually move the rudder or the steering. What happens is it just drives along the bar. Here, you gotta be careful. You don't want it to pop off, obviously. It is still, if you inadvertently hit the rudder in the air, it shouldn't really affect it any. And then, when you extend, it kind of comes back to automatically centered. I can actually cause the nose wheel to center up by just putting a little piece of 16th of an inch balsa right on the frame, the retract frame right here, and then it, it, as it, uh, as the steering arm here seats, it'll seat against the balsa and center up the nose tire. Yeah, the nose tire is centered up again. All right, works 4-0. I downloaded a picture of the instrument panel from a Learjet and wanted to use that for the instrument panel instead of trying to make up individual gauges. The only problem with the photo is it included the yokes and the throttles which I'd already made up individual pieces for. So here I am trying to blend out, if you will, the throttles and the yoke using Tamiya acrylics. 